We are back with Mark Khan. Mark, I am excited to talk about this cricket bat phenomenon. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get, in, get into this. The cricket bat, you know, for those who have never met Mark before, I don't know, Mark has redesigned the cricket bat. I'll, I'll let Mark tell us a little bit about that. Well, that's, um, that's a project that's been going on since the 90s. Uh -huh. um, just as a, a side thing that I, I do, you know. Um, I started out with the wicket, and um, I wanted to redesign the wicket, um, not redesign the wicket, but design the wicket so that for those of us who play softball on concrete or asphalt or, you know, on a hard surface, what I wanted to do was replicate the, the action. You know, when a guy is bold in real cricket, uh, the stumps kind of splay out, and that's the excitement, that's the culmination of that, that guy's, uh, you know, uh, time at bat. Um, he's done, and then it, the, the stumps split out shows that he's bold. So I wanted to capture that excitement um, for people who play softball. So I, um, I had been trying for years to figure out a system, um, a very simple system, uh, where you can put stumps on, you know, uh, onto a, some kind of, uh, I don't know, some kind of base. And um, when the ball hits the stumps, stumps would twist as though they were in, in dirt, simulating real hardball cricket. But I, 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 didn't, I couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. It just, I was too clumsy. So I, I put it aside for years, and then when 2020 cricket came about, I said, man, this is big. <laughs> so I, I better get back on my cricket inventions. Uh -huh. So I, um, I started back, and I had a, a friend who helped me um, come up with the idea of magnets. So what we did was we, um, we used a metal base and then we have injection molded stumps because softball you play with a rubber ball so you could have a plastic stump. And in the plastic stumps uh, is a series of um, rare earth magnets that lock on to the, uh, to the base and they pivot back and forth. So when the ball hits the stumps, the stumps splay, you know, and simulating real cricket. And it works beautifully. So uh, we... I figured it out. I um, designed two different um, wickets. <clears throat> we have a patent uh, on, on, the, on the, the wicket action of the stumps. And, uh, and then after that, I was, I was like, well, you know, what are you going to do with a wicket? A wicket, you know, who's going to buy just a wicket? So I, I said, what we need to do is we need to reinvent the cricket bat for softball. So, um, so I started in on that and I did a sketch. Um, I remember using a um, a, a, a cutting knife that um, that kind of had a, this bend thing. And I said, wow, I suppose a cricket bat was like that. So I designed, I started thinking about how you play cricket with a bat. And, you know, and then I also started thinking from a marketing point of view, how do you create a bat that's different than the bat there is today that could work better and also could be a, a, a strong differentiation in the, uh, you know, in the market to, uh, for, for selling. Um, so we came up with this concept um, called the offset uh, or shift, where the, um, the face of the bat, in, the, in a traditional cricket bat, the, uh, the, the face of the bat is in line with the handle. So what I did was I shifted the handle back from the face of the bat, and that's called a shift or an offset. Um, so what that does, when you hold the, the bat, the face of the bat is now pushed forward about just about a half an inch. Um, so that gives you a quicker response time to the ball. Can you, uh, you, that's, that's the can idea. We see, can we see this bat? If, I'm sorry? Can we see the bat? Do you have it there? Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, this, this first bat uh -huh. um, was what I created um, to answer this offset question. So. You can see how the handle is offset from the bat. And, and what I did using my design uh, sensibilities was to sculpt this bat into just a, you know, a beautiful thing. And so that's very different than a traditional cricket bat because of this, um, this offset handle thing. Is it heavy? I'm, no, it's, well, doing this, once you start doing this kind of thing, you've got to understand relationships. So there's a relationship between the bat and the type of ball you use. In hardball cricket, you use a hard ball, right? Right. But what did they use is willow, either uh, uh, British willow or cashmere willow. The British willow being uh, the higher quality. 
um, and they, so that's that's a whole different world um, because that willow absorbs the shock, especially uh, with the rubber hand. There's a there's a handle that goes into a cricket bat that's lined with rubber as well. Um, so that's a whole other world. This world of softball has no rules, so you can do whatever you want. So I took it upon myself to create um, a family of cricket of, of, of products specifically for the softball world. Um, so this. When you start talking about, about uh, weight, this bat has to weigh, um, I think this one weighs about 900 grams, um, but it's all relative to the, to the weight of the ball. Uh -huh. You know, it can't be too light with a heavier rubber ball because it would make sense. So um, generally, uh, for all the balls that exist, there's a, an official softball, heavy rubber ball. Um, you want to be at about 1,000 grams for your softball bat, 900 to 1,000. So you, you've done a lot of research on this thing, uh, Mark. Oh, but yeah, but you have to. If, if you want to be serious about whatever you do, you've got to research the whole thing. You've got to constantly be digging into what existed before. Why is yours different? How can you differentiate yourself in the market? What's, you know, like the offset handle? Um, you've, you've got to, you've got to uh, answer all these things. You know, you, you just have to. It's just part of the design process. Did you test it out, Mark? Uh, Shiv Narayan Chandrapal loves this whole uh, product line. Really? Yep. How, and how? Chris Gale as well. Um, I, I actually had a whole bunch of the players from the, because um, I was living up in New Jersey, from the U.S. cricket team play with them. Now, those guys play hardball. Right. But, um, they tried the softball products, and they thought it was great. They thought that the offset handle made a lot of sense for, uh, for a cricket bat. Now, remember, the world of cricket is not a world that changes. 2020 cricket was a huge change. So, um, especially changing the products, but I, I figured, you know, uh, I, I couldn't do anything in the hardball world because that bat is not very changeable in the hardball world. But, world, but, the, but in the softball world, it's just wide open. You do whatever you want. So why not, why not, you know, take the bull by the horns and create the thing that everybody will use? So, so is this the only design you have, Mark? Do you have others? No, well... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was going to get to that. Um, this was the um, this was the first bat, and it's a bat. You know what? It's got an offset handle, yes, and that's cool. And it's a beautiful looking object. And you know, cricketers uh, love this thing. Uh, everybody that holds it wants wants one. Um, <clears throat> but that's not enough for a, a family. So how do you create a family of of cricket products? Um, you know, with a wicket and a bat. So I, I happen to be, and I still am, an avid skateboarder. I do a lot of skateboarding since I was a kid in Brooklyn. Um, and I, I thought about the concept of a skateboard and how, how it's so, it's just, it's just a couple of parts. It's some wheels, some trucks, a, a couple of trucks, and a, and a, and a deck. <clears throat> now, with those, with those elements, you can have an entire store full of skateboards, right? So I wanted to do that with the cricket bat. So I, I invented and patented the, uh, the world's first modular cricket bat, which is this guy. Wow. Right? So this, one, uh, this particular one has the India flag on it. Um, so the idea here is just copy what works globally for skateboarding. Skateboarding is a phenomenon. So why don't we create a bat that's modular where... You can, there's a blade, there's a bracket, and there's a handle. And with these three pieces, you can create an entire store of products by, <clears throat> by changing the size and the thickness of the blade for larger players, players who want a heavier bat, uh, players who play with a lighter ball and have thinner blades. You know, it's endless the possibilities. So, Mark, what about the, what about the design on the, on the bat? You, they, someone could pick their own design? Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, well, now the graphic. The graphic, is, that's what I mean. Sorry, the just, graphic. Just like, just like in skateboards, people are attracted to the graphic. So we did the same thing for the, for the top of the bat. Now, <clears throat> with this, let me show you. The possibilities of the graphics on the blades become infinite. Wow. Right? This you is a typical course. blade that gets bolted onto a bracket. So this is a thinner blade, actually, and this is a uh, a thicker a thicker blade. 
So, so someone could have several blades then? Well, yeah, absolutely. It, you know, depending on, on your style of play, you know, you can have a long handle, a short handle. Um, you Recycle plastic. What? Recycle plastic blade. This is amazing. No, we have them made out of bamboo as well, you know, uh, which is, uh, is, is very, um, very good material to use because it's so sustainable. So this means a family of five or six could get their own, I mean, everybody could get their own, their individual bats, their own design right. and um, go on the field and play. So you, right, well, the, the whole idea is it's customized to you. Right, which is whatever you know. You go and you design your own sneakers. You go and you design, you know, all kinds of stuff. You can go on to our, our you know, build a bat online. What is it? What is the website? You know, upload, upload your own graphic or, or choose a graphic that we have. When when do you start marketing this or selling this, Mark? I mean, let, let, well, somebody need, let me read what the chat room said. Um, DB said, "Wow, um, what really inspired you in that direction?" We'll come back to that. And Rita said, "Asked, what's next? How do we get one?" Well, it's going to take some time. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a big deal. Uh, I traveled to India this year um, and convinced the... Um, I didn't have to do much convincing. I just showed them the product, uh, SG Cricket, um, which is the largest cricket manufacturer in the world. Um, and they want to carry... Uh, they, they want to produce this you know, in, a, in a short run to test out. Um, they think it's going to work. Um, so that's, that's where we are right now with, uh, with SG Cricket. So you're waiting on them to get back to you? Uh, yes. Unfortunately, um, their business has exploded, so we are kind of in a holding pattern uh, with, with, with these products. So, if 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 another investor wants to be part of this, what what where does that put you? Oh, absolutely! You know, we are more than willing to speak to anyone who's who's interested. Um, I, I can't sit around and wait for SG to uh, to be ready. So we are completely open. We have no uh, contract with them. But we know that the, we know that the, this is the biggest thing to hit cricket ever. We know that um, that if you look at the market of um, just like in American in American sport, in American uh, baseball, there's hardball baseball and there's softball baseball. A ton more people play softball than hardball, uh, and same with cricket. <clears throat> but you know the the difference between the the, the audience that the, the the group that plays hardball and softball is huge. Much m many more people play. Um, you know, maybe 80 to 20 play softball than, uh, than hardball cricket because it's just more accessible, more, more places to play. You know, hardball, you need to be in a field and you need, to be, um, you need to be geared up. Softball, you just grab a ball and a bat and you go. What was it like, Mark, when you created the first one and realized that it didn't work? What was that feeling like? You know, I, I, well, <clears throat> it, it came... It came from different sources. Like I, I had the um, the blades made in uh, in Vermont. Uh -huh. The um, the handles sand casted in um, I forget where. I think it was in New Jersey. <clears throat> and then all the pieces came to me, and I started painting and assembling. Uh -huh. And when I laid the graphics on there, and when I bolted it together, <laughs> I realized, oh my god, this is beautiful. You know, I really, I was really, I didn't have a finished piece like this before. I had some some mock-up prototypes, but to hold the finished piece um, was, a, was a wonderful thing. It was, and, and then, you know, I had a couple of partners um, doing some 3D stuff, and so the three of us together um, just were amazed by what we created. Somebody else in the chat room, Wendy, said um, he should consider making inroads into Australia, New Zealand, Pakistan, all cricket officials. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, absolutely. We, um, <clears throat> the, the Big Bash League, I just designed... Um, this is all on my own because what I do is I design this stuff. Like when I feel passionate about a project like this project, um, I would uh, I would I would go into it and I would I would think a little ahead. So even for this for this salt, for this cricket thing, even though I was going to India, I was designing bat graphics um, for the Big Bash League uh, in in, uh, in Australia, mm -hmm. and, and having all that stuff kind of set up. For if things don't go well one way, I have another direction and I have visual material to present to somebody else that's related to them. You know, so we can go with the Australians and the Australians can, can perhaps, um, you know, invest in it and then you can 
well, the, the major market is, is obviously India. India is the Premier League, and in India is um, is the hugest thing in the world. It's, that's that's where Mark, 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 um, take us into a fantasy or, or project for us. Let's uh -huh. say SG contacts you and says, "Look, it's 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 on." What happens, bro? It, when they when they contact me, and let's, sorry, say, let's say they contact you tomorrow and said, "Mark, yeah. it's on. We are going to manufacture this." <clears throat> What do you envision? What do you think is going to happen in this industry? Well, I think that um, I actually I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm, I'm optimistic that um, I mean everyone be showed everyone who holds this bat, regardless of if they play cricket or not, wants the bat. It's it, whatever it happens every time. I mean, I've showed hundreds of people these bats, had them hold it, play with them, and everybody wants a bat um, just because there's not, never been anything like it. And as well, it plays better than a traditional cricket bat. Um, and it's got so much going for it. You know, you can interchange the parts, you can change the colors, you can change the graphics, you can do so many things. Um, so what's going to happen, I think, is that um, if SG comes along and, and says, you know, let's do it, um, you know, when they have the time, I, I assume. <laughs> um, uh, I think they'll, they have 300 dealers in India. And uh, they'll they'll make a, a an initial run of fifty thousand bats, which is what they said they would do, uh, and then they would spread it out to these three hundred dealers. They actually they have such great relationships with their dealers that the dealers will buy whatever they give them. You know, sort of like a, um, it's great to work with SG. We will we'll, we'll oh. make sure that this happens. You will will swallow this this expense that you you know you went to. This is what SG tells me. I'm like, wow, really? They'll yeah, they said, well, if, they, if we tell them to buy it, they'll buy it. Wow. So really, it, there, there's not much cost. Um, you know, uh, well, there's initial cost to, to tool up for SG, but um, they already have the bat sold. The 50,000 pieces sold. This is amazing, Mark. Mark, I, I don't want this conversation to end. Uh, we don't <laughs> go into some other areas of, of your expertise. Give us a synopsis of the greenhouse you built in um, Regent Street, Guyana. Oh, the greenhouse. Oh, that was a lovely project. That was, um, that's, that's in Guyana, actually. Um, and I've never really worked, um, you know, on a large project in Guyana. And I've never worked on a piece of architecture. Um, but someone came along and said, uh, can you design a, a completely um, uh, uh, sustainable building? Uh, it, it has to run on solar. Uh, it has to, it, we can sell um, energy back, you know, to the... Um, to, to, to the grid, um, I need seven stories. It has to have retail. It has to have hotel. It has to have my penthouse. Um, this is what the person wanted, and so we started in on um, on, on this project. And um, and the you know I've got I've got a lot of experience in my field, mm -hmm. but I have no experience in architecture. I mean, I, I've um, you know I've, the most the, the biggest thing I've designed was maybe a two story exhibit. You know, so. It took a little while to um, to understand how a building works, you know, how stairs work, how you move people through a space, a, a building, um, what what uh, is involved in a building. I have a friend who's a, a, a Damien Bakiri. He's a, a solar expert, so he figured out the square footage of solar panels we needed, which was twenty five hundred square feet, um, in order to run this building. Um, so, uh, we did, you know, we had to allocate, uh, a 10 foot by 20 foot room for all the batteries and all that stuff. So there was so much groundwork initially before you could even start the design process. Um, and then we went, we went through a whole, um, a whole thing on, on okay, so what are the materials that we're using? Are they going to be recycled? Um, we, we, we designed buildings, um, with, uh, with containers, shipping containers. We started out that way, and then we, we kind of broke it down to, um, to to a concrete system using fly ash, which is lighter and uh, um, less um, less toxic than traditional concrete. Um, so so doing doing all that research, but even before that, the the research to um, to just look at buildings and to to think about Guyana and where this building would be situated. And how it would relate to the, the, the buildings around it. You know, uh, if you put up a shiny glass building in the middle of Georgetown, it's going to look a little strange. Mm -hmm. you know, so ideas like that have to come into your head of just to, 
answering all these questions. Well, where is this thing sitting? Who relates to this this building? You know, is there a concept to this building? What 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 is it all about? You know, all these questions. And, and I never honestly, I never wrote anything down. I just had all these uh, questions in my head um, even before the design process um, to, to 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 get it going. Mm -hmm. So so we you know what then what we did was we sort of worked from the inside out because we had such a narrow. We only had a, 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 a I think it's a 40 foot width by 110 feet. So it's this long skinny thing. So what do you do with this long skinny thing? You know, how do you, how do you create a building? How do you create some, something interesting, something iconic? Um, so what I decided to do was have a waterfall run down the face of the building, you know, in between the windows. And, um, and that was, um, that was a powerful concept that worked because we, we had to test it out first in 3d to make sure that, that it would sit well and it, would, it made sense. And um, so having this outside concept uh, kind of solved, there was an, uh, an infinity pool up top that overflowed down the face of the building. Um, having that idea in our, in our heads, in, in actually in my head, I, I did all the design work. Um, we then started working internally and <clears throat> figuring out what the needs were for each floor and how the stairs and the elevator worked to go all the way up to the, 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 the penthouse, the two-floor penthouse. Um, so that, um, the design stuff was easy. The, the, um, the, just, the, 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 uh, just the figuring out the stairs. I keep getting stuck on the stairs. Having stairs move, you know, and, and connecting with an elevator and, you know, certain areas have to be locked off at night and, you know, if somebody came to his office uh, on a Sunday, um, he needed to go through and not have to go through all these. It was uh, it was tough, but we, we did it smoothly, and I, and I was really really happy with the uh, the outcome. So, is this building is it building operational right now? No, no, no. It's it's still in it's, it's still, still in concept. concept. It's, it's um it's got a long way to go before it can um it can okay. go through the whole you know engineering. It's, I'm not an engineer. I designed the building. I know it's going to stand, um, but um, but engineers need to take over now. So that my part, my creative uh, vision is done, and they'll figure out how to how to hold it Mark, up. Mark, if, if you had the opportunity to return to Guyana, what are some design ideas you would propose? Oh my goodness, my actually, you know, my dream is really to go back home. I have um, I have so much to offer uh, to a place that I absolutely love. I, I mean, I left there when I was ten, but my goodness, that that time has just stuck with me, um, and it's just a uh, it's just a wonderful thing to have, you know, as part of your life. Oh, I came from this place. I came from this paradise. You know, I came from this beautiful land. Um, so I would I would I would love to go. Out. The, the couple of things that I'd like to do is I would like to redesign the Guyana Museum. I'd really like to, um, you know, be, because I'm an exhibit designer, it's a natural for me to to. Um, to present everything Guyanese in, in a beautiful space. Oh, that, that would be powerful. That would be powerful, Mark. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it's a, it's it's it would be it would be a life achievement to be involved in something so um, connected to a group of people that that um, is a learning device. It's a um, it's a nationalistic device, you know, because people come and they're proud of it, and um, there's a place to go on a Sunday or a Saturday where you can you can. You know, be proud of your heritage, your country, the natural resources. Um, so I, I'd love to be involved in something like that. I, I, you know, I, there's one thing. I, a couple of years back, I designed, um, and this was on my own. I, I went to Guyana and I saw how, um, just how horrifying the front of Stabrook Market was. And I said, man, you know, somebody needs to redesign this front area because it's just so it's just so chaotic and congested so i came back home with this idea that you know well, why don't you do it so I, I i started working on it and i started um doing some research first uh, you know on on, um, on marketplaces and how they're so important to societies um because there's so much that can go on there you know um it's it's, it's endless what can go on in the marketplace so it's a pretty powerful um location too as well because it's got this iconic landmark which is that big red fabric market um so what i did was i created a um a multi-function 
a multi-use um, area in front of Stabrook Market, which was um, which included a park with a bandstand, a traditional bandstand like you'd see in the Promenade Gardens or at the, at the sea walls, um, where bands could come and play, people could sit, park setting with fountains for kids to run in. Um, that would be on the inside. And then the way I figured tackling the, um, the, uh, the minibus situation was that instead of everybody coming from one direction, I had these, um, these, these promenades of sorts where, where um, uh, minibuses could come in two directions and it eased the, um, the, the, the blockage, you know, from having everything on one side. Um, so it was that, and it included an architectural element, which was a, um, a U-shaped um, uh, sort of structure, a shelter of sorts that delineated the space. It also connected the large building uh, to this, this, uh, this plaza, uh, which was um, detailed with all the little filigree and, and things that matched the, uh, the building in front. But the challenge, uh, I remember the challenge of that was to design a, a roof structure that wouldn't block the, um, the main building from oh. when you were walking down the streets. Yeah. So you're thinking of everything at once, you don't want to obscure the vision of, of Stabrook Market because then you'd, you'd ruin the whole thing, right? Yeah. So um, the, uh, the roof structure that I designed was really slight. I think it was like on a 10 degree angle. So it was like a sliver and you could see through everything and, and you, the, the Stabrook Market was presented. But that, that U-shaped structure in front just connected everything in a really harmonious way. Um, and that... Um, that actually, you know, I was I was trying really hard with that uh, with the um, with with before the election, and um, when the election came around, which is the, the time I had um, I had presented it, um, it just got forgotten. You know, it got put aside. Like we we, we have we have to reawaken it, Mark. I think is that's a brilliant idea, right? Yeah, you know, and, and I, I think I think people need some place in Guyana to go to. That's beautiful. That's that's uh, that's just got some grace and some elegance to it. Um, that 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 makes us proud to be Guyanese, where we can go and celebrate. We can have flea markets and bands and movie and, and community meetings. You know, uh, all that stuff can go on in a in a in a market. I I totally agree. Tell tell me quickly a little bit about um, your furniture design. Oh well, the furniture design came. We, well, we we moved from New Jersey to uh, to Florida. Uh. So I, had, that's my last winter. I can't. I can't take the winter anymore. It's just <laughs> it's crushing. <laughs> I don't know how you feel, but I, 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 I'm done with the. I, I moved to Florida and I planted mangoes. I planted uh, sour sap. I planted uh, uh, five finger. I planted three different kinds of uh, uh, guavas. I have. Uh, Listen to him. I have a papa tree that blew down in the hurricane, but I put it back up. So I am. I'm. Um, you know, to to actually grow something grow a little tree and to actually pick the fruit from it yeah it's an amazing thing yeah right. i just find it so mar- i can go pick cherries outside now it's just cherry season I, I, coming just it, this stuff is coming out of the land and you can just pick it <laughs> it's <laughs> i know it's not a novel concept <laughs> <laughs> thanks mark well, so, so what kind of furniture you focus on oh the, the furniture yes the um we got sidetracked with the plants um i am uh i'm a well in school, I studied furniture design as well. So um, I've always, uh, somehow I got, I went into exhibits. But I'm designing uh, a line of furniture. Um, it's got a little trick to it. It's, uh, it's mid-century modern. But it's, um, I'm making the furniture to look vintage, to look like it's got some history to it. Mm. That's the kind of furniture that I like. I, I like to look, I don't like new things. I like to look at something and see that, you know, someone else owned this. Someone else lived with it. Someone else experienced it. And now it's my turn to experience it. So the furniture is new um, because I'm building it to sell it, right? right. But, um, but it's, it's all hand sanded, hand oiled, hand rubbed, hand waxed. And it, it, takes, on, it takes on a historical, um, just a, a, an other world feeling that, you know, it's been here before kind of thing, especially with the styling, um, which was very important. That took about a year to, to figure out. The simplest things take the longest time. So... It took about a year to, to get that under control. Now we're, um, I think we're going to be in, in a few big magazines, actually. Wow. Because we did press releases and, and people, you know, like it. So uh, they, 
I, you know what I figured? I figured if I like it, you know, if I, if I love it, there's got to be some people out there that are going to love it too. There's got to be an audience for it. There's so many people out there. So that's my, uh, that's my stance and that's how I, I, I tackled it. You know, I, I figured, you know, nothing ventured. Let me, let me just hit the chat room for a second. Wendy said, in addition, selling us toys to Mattel and other manufacturers, hello, mass production. The, the, the bats. Selling well, it oh, the, no, you know, it, um, with, with, the, with the cricket, the, the audience in the United States just isn't there to support it. Mm. You know, there, it, it's, there's an audience, but it's a very small audience, especially, you know, the softball cricket. <coughs> You've got to go to the places. Um, you, you've got you've got to go to India. India is your market. India is the is uh, you know billions of people who uh, I was just there and cricket is a religion with, with those people. Wow. When they when they saw these bats, they were just blown away. I just I don't understand why they, you know it's it's um, they're having a hard time. I guess you know existing business comes first. You've got to you know you got to supply products to clients who want them. And then Rita Rita asks, when do they come out? I guess the the furniture. The furniture is out now. You can go to silverbaitfurniture.com and you can silverbait silverbaitfurniture.com. Yeah. Okay. Now we started we started out with uh, with one piece and uh, now we are uh, we're designing, you know, all, all kinds of other stuff. So Mark, when are you most happy? When am I most happy? Uh-huh. When I'm when I'm cre absolutely when I'm creating something or when I'm when I'm planting a tree. Or when I'm with my kids, or when I'm, you know, having fun with my family, it's it's everything. What are you most life in general just makes me happy. <laughs> what are you most proud of? What am I most proud of? Um, I am. I guess I'm. I think I'm very proud of my family that um, that I've raised such wonderful kids. You know, respectful kids. Um, I'm proud of my wife because she's a hard worker and she's, um, you know, she's a she's a health coach. And she helps so many people um, be healthy again. You know, they come from some really strong sickness into, into health. So I'm very proud of her too. What, uh, let, me, let, me, let me frame it this way. If you could go back in time, what would you tell your 15 year old self? If I was to go back in time, what, what would I tell? What would you tell your 15 year old self? My 15-year-old self. Oh, man, that's a good one. Um, I, would, um, I, 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 would, I would tell my 15-year-old self, it's, it's okay to fail. Mm -hmm. because, because there's no such thing as failure. It's just experience. It's just, um, you know, it's just a necessary thing to happen in order to succeed. Um, I would absolutely say yes. Fail a hundred times. Just keep failing, because eventually, all that stuff that you uh, use, uh, all that stuff that you, you've done, will you'll use to create the next thing um, that'll that'll have a better chance of of, uh, of working. Last question, Mark. Sure. What makes you laugh out loud? I, <laughs> what makes me laugh out loud? Uh, you know, there are some there are some Guyanese people who can tell a joke. <laughs> And in a very Guyanese way, and I, you know, I lost, I lost everything. You know, I'm just, I'm speaking normal, you know, like a, just a regular American. <laughs> um, but when, when I can hear someone tell a joke, like I remember Sensible Bill and Stupidy Bill. Remember those guys? Oh yeah. <laughs> if I can hear someone tell a joke, and the jokes are so corny, but it's just the accent and the delivery and the timing that just sets me. Uh, just, it's just a wonderful thing. <laughs> Mark. Thank you, brother. Oh, thank you. It was great. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't get to ask you any questions, which is, uh, which is not fair. <laughs> well, this is conversations with someone. <laughs> Selwyn, it was, it was a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome, brother. You are welcome. You. you get a chance. You get a chance to ask me questions, right? Okay, good. And I we, hope so. we'll, we'll be talking. So, so Mark, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking you on air like, here tonight. Um, I'm asking you this question live. You go, right. You're coming with us to Guyana next year, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't miss it. We're going to work on that. We're going to make that thing look really good. Awesome. Awesome. Can't wait, brother. All, All right, right, buddy. Take care. Have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you.
Good night.